message tonight, let's take our hymnals and turn to number 328, Standing on the Promises. And of course, we can't sit down to sing that one. So let's join together and stand and sing 328, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Saviour. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Saviour Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Saviour Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Saviour as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Saviour. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We continue tonight with part three in our study of Christ in all the scriptures. It's an exciting study because our Lord Jesus Christ is found in every book of the Old Testament. And in fact, we have just barely skimmed the surface by giving one and sometimes two illustrations of where he appears in each of those books. Prophetically, typologically, we find things that our Lord Jesus Christ quotes on the cross, for example, uh, specific illustrations of uh, people who are like our Lord Jesus Christ in some way and how he fulfills the typology of those people, people such as Joseph and Daniel and others. And tonight we are in Acts chapter 8 and looking at verse 35, Philip has been speaking to the Ethiopian eunuch and it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, which was Isaiah 53 verses 7 and 8 and preached unto him Jesus. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that our Lord Jesus Christ is found in all of the scriptures. We thank you, Father, that they all are organized around and point to him. In the midst of all the other things that are happening in this world and which are spoken of in the word of God, all of it ultimately gets back to him the one who is the creator, the one who is the redeemer, the one who is the sovereign Lord and judge of the earth. And so, Father, we pray for your blessings upon your word tonight as it goes forth, that it would not return unto you void, but that it would accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing whereto you have sent it. And so we commit this time to you and pray for your blessings to each of our hearts to open the eyes of our understanding that we might see Jesus. For we pray it in his name. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, himself said that he was found in all of the scriptures, and we see that in Luke chapter 24, verses 25 and following, where he speaks to the two on the road to Emmaus. And then later, as he speaks to the disciples at the end of that chapter, where again it says that he showed them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Twice in Luke chapter 24, Jesus himself emphasizes the fact that he is to be found in all of the scriptures. We've already looked at a number of the books of the Old Testament, about two-thirds of them, and I will just summarize in a sentence what we saw in each of those books. In Genesis chapter 1 and John 1, we saw Jesus as the creator. In Exodus 3 and John 8, we saw Jesus as Jehovah, who spoke to Moses at the burning bush. In Leviticus 4 and John 1, 29, we saw Jesus as the sacrificial lamb of God. In Numbers chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 9, we saw Jesus as our great high priest. In Deuteronomy 18 and Acts chapter 3, we saw Jesus as the prophet of God. In Joshua 1 and Matthew 28, we saw Jesus as the divine, omnipresent companion. In Judges chapter 5 and Ephesians 4, we saw Jesus as the ascended victor. In Ruth 4 and Matthew 1, we saw Jesus as the seed of the prophesied line. In 1 Samuel 16 and Hebrews 1, we saw Jesus as the anointed of the Lord. In 2 Samuel 5 and Matthew 2, we saw Jesus as the king over his people. In 1 Kings 33 and Matthew 21, we saw Jesus as the king riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. In 2 Kings 2 and Luke 24, we saw Jesus and the ascension. In 1 Chronicles 3 and Matthew 1, we saw Jesus and the royal genealogy. In 2 Chronicles 1 and 1 Corinthians 1, we saw Jesus, the wisest ruler of all. In Ezra 1 and John 2, we saw Jesus and the building of the temple. In Nehemiah 4 and Matthew 26, we saw Jesus and our protective wall against temptation. In Esther 6 and Romans 14 and Philippians 2 as well, we saw Jesus the despised becomes Jesus the glorified. Then we looked at the book of Job last week, beginning there, and saw Christ the protector from Satan. Comparing Job 1 with Luke 22, Hebrews 7.25, Romans 8.34-39. through 39. In the Psalms we saw many different passages related to our Lord, but we see him portrayed in three main ways. Christ the crucified, Christ the Savior, and Christ the King. Christ the Crucified in Psalm 22, and of course we see Psalm 110, our Lord Jesus Christ as the one who is the King of Kings. We compared that with the Gospel of Matthew. We saw him on the cross in the Gospel of Matthew, quoting Psalm 22 about himself. In Proverbs we saw Christ, the wisdom of God, and of course many other things could be said about our Lord Jesus Christ out of the book of Proverbs. We saw the comparison in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we saw the vanity of life under the sun is only answered in the one who is the sun and who takes us from vanity to that which is truth. The Song of Solomon, we saw Christ the heavenly bridegroom with an eternal love that cannot be bought. In Isaiah, we saw Christ the suffering servant in Isaiah chapter 53. In Jeremiah, we saw Christ, the righteous Lord of the temple. In Jeremiah 7, and then in Matthew 21, Mark 11, and Luke 19. In Lamentations, we saw Christ, the merciful one to the suffering. In Ezekiel, we saw Christ as the messianic ruler establishing his kingdom and the description of the city of Jerusalem and the territory which will be given to Messiah the Prince. In Daniel we saw Christ, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, who will smite all the nations 
as the great mountain that comes and smites the image on the feet. And so now tonight we're in part three and we move into the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 11 and beginning in verse 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him, and here is our key phrase, and called my son out of Egypt. That's fulfilled by Christ in Matthew 2.15. And was there until the death of Herod, Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus have fled to Egypt because of the revelation of the angel of the Lord. And it says, and it was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Quotation of Hosea 11.1. 1. Hosea 13.4, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. Acts 13.23, Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Hosea 13.14, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Paul quotes that, speaking of Christ's resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15.55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We move to the book of Joel next. Joel 2, 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Peter quotes this speaking of Christ and how Jesus fulfills the prophecies and how now he has sent the Holy Spirit and in Acts chapter 2, verse 20, where he is quoting the second chapter of Joel, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. In Joel chapter 2, verse 11, we read, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Here the Lord is leading his army in Joel 2, and in Revelation 19 we find Christ leading his army. I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, which, by the way, is a reference back to Psalm 110. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We move to the book of Amos, Amos chapter 2, verse 10. Also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you forty years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26. Speaking of that exodus from Egypt which Amos mentions, Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. This morning we were talking about the one who spoke to Moses as the Lord Jesus Christ out of the burning bush, the one who led them through the wilderness. There was some question that people had raised about that, but Moses, it says, esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Moses had spoken with our Lord Jesus Christ in a theophany at the burning bush, and he left all that was in Egypt to take the children of Israel, the rebellious, wicked, naughty children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt to the land of promise. Because he endured, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Revelation 11.8, 8, 
And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually, and this is Jerusalem he's talking about, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Many different pictures of Christ and what he accomplished given to us in the book of Amos. Obadiah, a very short little book. Obadiah 1 8, shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? Paul quotes that in relation to our Lord Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians 1 19, 24, and 30. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The two things that are mentioned in Obadiah 1 8. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And then down to Obadiah 121. There's only one chapter, of course, in Obadiah. The Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Revelation 11:15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. We move to the book of Jonah. Jonah 1.9 And he said unto them, I am in Hebrew, I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. John 1, 1 through 3 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Then Jonah 1.17, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Our Lord speaking in Matthew 12.39, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jonah, the picture of the resurrection of Christ. We find a little farther in Matthew 12, verse 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. And so we find Jonas proclaiming to Nineveh as Christ proclaimed to his generation. Matthew 16, verse 4. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Twice he uses that in the Gospel of Matthew as the one who fulfills the sign of Jonas. We move to the book of Micah, and a passage that you're very familiar with, particularly at this Christmas season. Micah 5.2 But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Matthew 2 beginning in verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, and they quote Micah 5, 2, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. 
You'll notice something if you were listening to that verse in Micah 5.2. They left off the last phrase. Whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. That phrase, from old, from everlasting, is used throughout the Psalms to speak of God himself. The one who is born in Bethlehem of Judea, but the one who is eternal in his person. The one who has always been in the past, who is now, and who always will be. Takes us back to our studies of the morning when we dealt with the name of God. There's another passage that you've heard me preach on, and I'll just mention it briefly. But it tells us exactly where in Bethlehem he would be born. And thou, O tower of the flock, that's Migdal Edar, and thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. To the tower of the flock, to Migdal Edar. That is the place, as we discover through the study of ancient Jewish history, where the lambs were birthed. That is the place where the ewes who were about to deliver were brought so that they might give birth to their little lambs. Jesus, of course, is the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. We move to the book of Nahum. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Paul alludes to this in 2 Timothy 2.19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In Romans 3.26, we have another allusion. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. The Lord knoweth them that trust in him. Who is it? Them that believe in Jesus. Nahum 1.15 Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. The Apostle Paul, speaking of the gospel of Christ, says, And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written? Beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Paul using it to refer to our Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel. The book of Habakkuk is next, Habakkuk 1.5. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. Now listen to this last phrase, because the apostle Paul is going to quote this verse in relation to Christ. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though I told you. I will work a work in your days. And Paul, preaching, says, Be it known unto you, therefore, Acts 13, 38, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, that is, the Lord Jesus Christ, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken by the prophet. And this is from Habakkuk. He's quoting now, verse 41, Behold, ye despisers, and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Habakkuk chapter 2, we know well, in verse 4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And who is the object of our faith? It is our Lord Jesus Christ. And this verse is quoted three times in the New Testament concerning faith in Christ. Romans 1.17 For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, The just shall live by faith. 
Paul quotes it again in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Again, it's quoted in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. That brings us to the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 7 and 8. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand, for the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. He hath bid his guests, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And we find the day of the Lord's sacrifice in the book of Revelation. Our Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation 19.16, which we have quoted already, has just been presented as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I saw an angel, verse 17, standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, that's Christ, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Zephaniah 1.14, The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, it hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Paul speaks of that day in this way. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Zephaniah 1, 16 and 17, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy. For he shall make a speedy riddance of them all that dwell in the land. The day of the Lord's wrath. Revelation 19.15 Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The book of Haggai is next. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 6. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Here is the picture of God shaking the earth, what we would call an earthquake. Revelation 6, verse 12, And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Chapter 8, verse 5, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Revelation eleven thirteen, And the same hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Revelation sixteen eighteen. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. Haggai 2.6 Verse 7 of Haggai 2, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Revelation 15.4 Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations 
shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Zechariah. Zechariah 1, 13 and 14. And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto thee. Jehovah himself dwelling in the midst of his people. That brings us again to Christ sitting on the throne in the book of Revelation and dwelling in his people. Listen to Revelation 7.15. Therefore, as they before the throne of God, they serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Chapter 21, verses 2 and 3. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And in that context, that is the Lord Jesus Christ in fulfillment of that great prophecy in Zechariah chapter 1 and chapter 2. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne and that as we have seen is Christ said, Behold, I make all things new. He was the creator. He is the one who is now making the new heavens and the new earth. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And then another one out of the book of Zechariah that you know so well. Zechariah 9, 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Fulfilled by Christ in Matthew 21, 1 and following. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, they were come to Bethphage. Under the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, and this is quoting now Zechariah 9, 9, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. That brings us to the final book of the Old Testament where we find our Lord Jesus Christ and where we find his forerunner. Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Matthew chapter 17, verses 9 and following. We have there the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the mount. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? That, of course, is a reference back to the book of Malachi. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things, 
But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. John, who is the one who declares of himself, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, quoting the book of Isaiah, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That was the declaration that Malachi ends with that the forerunner would come to announce the Messiah. And that brings us directly to the Gospel of Matthew and the coming of that great and precious and promised one. Christ in all the scriptures. If someone came to you and were reading in the book of Obadiah, could you now show them where Jesus is? Second Chronicles. Could you show them Christ in Esther? Could you show them Christ in Zephaniah? I hope so. I hope you've been at least jotting down the references. We've gone quickly through them. There's a great deal about our Lord Jesus Christ as we compare Old Testament to New Testament. Christ in all the scriptures. He declared unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Jesus is there. Our gracious Heavenly Father, once again we thank you for the magnificent beauty of your word and how you have given it to us so that we might know Christ, so that we might know him, your only begotten son whom you sent into the world to be the sacrificial lamb for our sins. We pray, Father, that you will take your word as we have heard it tonight and begin to meditate on each book of the Old Testament, not merely reading through it in a year, though that is good in and of itself, but looking for Jesus. As we compare the Old Testament with the New Testament, seeing Christ in every book of the Bible, as we study your word, not merely glance over it, show us Jesus in every one of the prophets. Gracious Father, once again, we thank you for your word and we pray that it will not return void but that it will accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing whereto you have sent it. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.